Yes, folks, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome once again to my Extra Games and Collectibles. It's time for another action figure review here on the channel. And as you can see on the screen right now, today's installment is going to be taking a closer look at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Collector's Edition Wonder Woman. Here she is. Woo! Wonder Woman! Uh, anyway... Stick around because I'm going to give you all the ins and outs, ups and downs that you need to know if you're thinking about picking up a Wonder Woman of your own from McFarlane Toys. I'll talk you through the aesthetic, I'll talk you through all the accessories and added value, I'll talk you through the articulation, and I'll show you the live unboxing that I recorded when she first dropped on my doorstep. So let's not dilly-dally round, let's get into it and let's go back in time to visit past Chris as he cracks the package open for the very first time on the day she arrived. All right, let's do it. Here we go then, here is the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Wonder Woman. This is the McFarlane Collector's Edition of the figure, not the Platinum Edition. You can tell the difference because the Collector's Edition's got the gold uh, trimmings and decorative features, whereas the Platinum Edition's got the yellow, I think. Someone let me know in the comments down below if I've got that wrong. Uh, but it's a standard Collector's Edition packaging, which is very much in line with the overall DC Multiverse packaging aesthetic. Window box, we've got the Collector's Edition um, logo down the side, DC Multiverse. Multiverse, Wonder Woman. It's a bit shinier. It's not the uh, blue and white uh, motif. It's this kind of black looking sexy, bit more shelf presence for the collector's edition version of it. Then on the back, we've got this wonderful large uh, Terry Dodson art artwork from uh, issue one of whatever volume this is, volume four, volume five that you drew that for. Uh, which is fine, and then a few kind of marketing bits and bobs in the corner there, but wonderful Terry Dodson artwork there. On the side, collector's edition, character name, who is Wonder Woman, DC Multiverse, and it's numbered, it's number 10 from the collector's edition. And then on the other side, another bit of window, and then I've got some, uh, this came from Amazon, but I don't know what, so what that is, some sort of Amazon importy sticker, there's more on the bottom in fact. Yeah, I think these have all been added, these are all Amazon barcode -y things or whatever, I'm not sure what they are. Uh, and then we've got the legal bollocks and malarkey there across the bottom. Okay, let's get it open. So I'll pop the tape across the bottom. I'll slide the figure out. And there we go. Wonder Woman and all her goodies are being held in a blister pack. And then you've got the, usual, the standard McFarlane Toys kind of blue uh, card back there. The card back has the training card and the foot stand. I'll get those off. Uh, off screen in just a moment and then the figure and all the goodies tie wrapped in and taped in within an inch of their lives so uh where did i just put those scissors right there we go cut trimmed snipped i know the uh, hasbro plastic free packaging initiative was unpopular with some quarters but i really hate all this tie wrap sellotape blister pack bollocks so it's not for me at all uh but anyway let's get into it then so we've got hands on here under this set of tape Quite a few hand swaps available with this one. Some open palms, some closed fists, big old battle axe, the lasso of truth. Oh, that's like double tape down one set. I just want to play with my toy. I don't have to go through like 40 minutes worth of untagging and untaping and shit. Uh, there's a sword, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Stop whinging. Just get on with it, Chris. Then the shield. Then we've got this funky uh, kind of trading card display stand thing. Uh, and then, of course... Oh, you come there, Wonder Woman. Oh, tie wrap at the wrist there. I missed the tie wrap. I missed the tie wrap. Ah, she's free. I have released her from her plastic prison. There we go. So here we go, folks. Right, so there we are. There's Wonder Woman and all her goodies. So, as usual, ladies and gents, I'm going to go away and have a good bit of uh, hands-on man-child playtime with the figure, get her posed up, definitely get her mixed in with uh, Batman and Superman, see what they look like on uh, the shelf in display together, examine the articulation, see what the art possible is, and then I'll be back in a couple of days' time to share my review thoughts. So, I'll see you in three, two, one. Pew. Okay then folks, time to talk about the figure's aesthetic then. Let's talk about the visual experience with this Wonder Woman from McFarlane Toys. And uh, overall, it's not too bad. I would describe it as just about good enough. It's not without its flaws, and some of these flaws may be deal breakers for some. Um, one or two of them have been deal breakery for me, but the overall experience isn't too bad when compared to the rest of the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse line. 
Let's get started by talking about the face sculpt. I usually like to start with the face sculpt. And this is a curious one. It, uh, it's a hard one for me to measure, to be honest, and describe on a review because this face sculpt is the sort of face sculpt that sometimes you look at it from a certain angle and you go, yeah, all right, that's a... That's a pretty banging face sculpt, very pleased with that. And then at other times, from other angles, you look at it and go, whoa, what the freaking hell's going on there? And nothing in between, it's just like these two crazy polar extremes. And I don't know whether that's just me, my eyeballs, the way I'm looking at the figure. You'll let me know in the comments down below if you agree with that or not. But I just sort of find it a little bit oddly shaped and sculpted at times from certain angles. Fundamentally, all the core basics are there. It is a sculpted face. There's definition in the features. There's paint applications applied to give it some depth, like the eyes, the lips, the eyebrows, the eyeshadow, etc., etc. The uh, the the uh, tiara thing is sculpted on, and again, the paint applications are well applied with the gold uh, band with the red star on it. The hair has got this lovely sculpted drape down there. All the fundamentals are there. It just kind of looks a little bit from certain angles, a bit flat, like she's kind of taking a frying pan to the face. And the nose sort of, the point of the nose sticks up a bit too much and makes it feel a bit too nostrily, I think. A bit too much nostril on view there from certain angles. Which is a shame because, you know, the facial features for Wonder Woman are a key part of the visual identity. She's supposed to be this incredibly gorgeous kind of uh, uh, Greek Athenian goddess uh, that makes the fellas all melt at the knees and you know fall at her feet kind of thing. Uh, and it's just not quite the case from some angles. Like if you look at her from a sort of higher up looking down where the nostrils aren't so prominent, it's actually a really good face sculpt. But then if you turn her from the side or you look at her, look at her in a straight up profile... It's, it's not quite there, which is a shame, because like I say, from some angles, you're like, yes, what a face sculpt. And from some other angles, you're like, whoa, what's... The, what's this all about uh, but everything's yeah it's lovely I mean the hair sculpt is really great there's a little bit of a kind of blue wash in there to give it some depth and some texture uh, that's all really lovely uh, and from certain angles like I say it's great so if, if you're posing her up and positioning her I'd go from a, a view where you're looking more sort of down onto her face moving down into the main body of the figure you can see that the uniform the, the, the Wonder Woman costume is all sculpted on detail so in a kind of bustier thing and a hot pants and a Wonder Woman belt, it's all sculpted, three-dimensional, gives it texture, gives it depth, which I appreciate. One of the things I like about McFarlane Toys is the uh, texture details there uh, the paint applications are all very well applied you've got the stars on the hot pants there there's no spillage on the gold and red or limited spillage on the gold and red there the color here as well is nice that kind of more metallic metal just gives it a little bit of shelf presence a bit of pop which is lovely uh, and that's continued into the metallic paint scheme on her uh, bracelets there um, which give it just a, a nice shelf presence and a, a kind of comic accurate look and feel. And what that also means is because of the way the belt is present here and the fact that she is wearing hot pants as an actual costume choice, the, the sort of McFarlane nappy effect isn't so dominant and eye-catching compared to other figures we've seen in the past. The skin tone isn't great. It's a bit too white. Uh, it's never been more apparent to me than sitting down to record this review because under my light box lights it's really bright i've had to turn down the uh, um the, the the light settings to make sure she's not just blinding us reflecting off her skin uh, so the skin tone's a little bit too light in color i think you know this is she comes from a, a mysterious hidden greek island you'd expect her to have a, a little bit of color um you know she's been under the sun there's also this kind of darker skin tone patch around the knee point here um which reminds me of when you know like my wife and daughter are doing self-tanning uh <laughs> home and they, they don't apply it to their knees very well which stands out it looks kind of now i've called it out you could probably see it there's like this weird little darker patch that goes emanates out from the knee area and it looks like a, a you know a, a self-tanning Error. So I'd like to have seen a little bit more colour, a little bit more depth to the skin tone there to be more reflective of, you know, where in the world she's from and uh, this kind of Athenian beauty idea. 
Shooting down to the bottom of the legs then, uh, the boots are an odd choice. Uh, we start off well, they're sculpted on. Uh, we've got some paint applications there, but as you can see, the paint applications are a bit rough and ready on these, these white sections here. The boots are textured, uh, which is nice. They've got a kind of leathery look and effect, but then we've got these weird feet going on here, uh, which do not seem to replicate what like my mind's eye picture of uh, Wonder Woman boots look like. Um, the, this weird sort of trimming around the edges is obviously a reused part. I don't know specifically which figure from, uh, but they, they look strange and they draw the eye and they affect the visual experience of the character overall, which is a bit of a shame. I'll talk about it a little bit more when I come to the articulation section, but I find the uh, this the shoulder points here. Uh, you can see, if I do that, you can see where these gaps start to break in on the figure. So where they uh, we've got this like little cover section over the uh, shoulder socket um, sits. Now with a, a kind of fully spandexed up superhero with other figures that I've had from McFarlane, that's less bothersome. But when it's kind of flesh and skin tone, when you end up with that little bit of a break in there, like that when you're posing her up um it can be a little bit annoying and a little bit aesthetically jarring uh, now it's it's fixable because you can sort of fidget and fiddle it into uh into a position that disguises the gaps but um i don't know it's just it's just bugged me uh, i was taking a few pictures yesterday and every now and again i take the picture and then go oh man i forgot about the gap you know, around the back here or something. I'm like, oh shit, take the picture again. Grumble, grumble, grumble. It was just a bit bit annoying. And then just some of the usual kind of pieces here. Like, uh, you know, it's still looking at pin joints. Uh, we've got the weird ball wrist and the weird ball ankle. We've seen figures from McFarlane lately that have moved away from that and tried to make these joints look a little bit more integrated and seamless into the uh, into the footwear uh, and make the wrists look a little bit more integrated and seamless into the hands. Uh, and that doesn't seem to be the case with this one, which is a disappointment because it's a collector's edition figure that comes with a higher price tag. And therefore, I'd have expected a little bit more effort when it comes to things like maybe getting some pin joints or at least doing the bare minimum we've seen them do it a bit recently where we've got better looking ankles and better looking wrists so i'm going to give the wonder woman uh, aesthetic review visual experience review a tentative thumbs up maybe edging a little bit down towards the middle there because um it's up to the general usual standard you get from farland toys there's a lot to like around the uniform and the costume and the overall visual experience but when you kind of dig into some of the finer detail like the face sculpt the kind of out outdated pin joint look the weird boot choices the 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 stuff i don't like around the wrists and ankles and just 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 generally a little bit loose around the edges you start to think well that's not good enough when it's a collector's edition figure with a collector's edition price tag you know so that's you have to kind of weigh it up around how much you paid for it in terms of the quality and the visual experience you're getting it so it's a tentative thumbs up because i like it and on the shelf in amongst my batman and superman which we'll, t we'll take a look at them side by side in a bit is a, is a nice experience and it's great to have a classic look Wonder Woman but it's just a little bit too rough around the edges to warrant this kind of collector's edition label and price tag so there we go all right cool uh, so that's the aesthetic let's now talk about the articulation getting started above the shoulders then it's just basically a ball at the top of the neck in the base of the head gives you a little bit of down and uh, you would have a bit of up and some side by side but the sculpt of the hair kind of gets in the way of that so very little up and then you can turn it to the side uh, to some degree and you can get a little bit of tilt out of that but the uh, the way the hair drapes over the shoulders is your problem there it's not actually the articulation that's the issue moving into the shoulders then it's the socket into the into the ball joint which gives you a good kind of uh, shuffly motion there with your annoying little uh, disguisey bit and then a hinge at the shoulder to give you the t-shape full 360 all the way around as well there there is a cut there at the top of the bicep and tricep. Mine's quite tight and limited. Double pinned elbow that gets you up to there. And then the ball wrists, which give you a swivel all the way around. And they've got a hinge in them as well, so you can do a bit of up and down, back and forth, based on your positioning. 
Ball joint in the waist down here, tucked away below the belt, which gives you a little bit of movement and swivel, uh, which is pretty decent, not too bad. And it's the standard um, McFarlane kind of hingy groin thing, so if I do that, you can see in there. Oh, get it in focus, Chris. There you go, the hingy groin thing. Although I've suddenly become very conscious of doing that with the figure on camera. But it gives you good splits, and then there's a little bit of swivelly hingy motion at the top of the thigh there. Pin double knee that'll get you up to there, although again you wouldn't want to do too much with that knee because it's got that kind of uh, McFarlane um, break in it which makes the aesthetic a little bit weird if you go too wild with the hinges. No boot cut but then the uh, ball uh, ankles that I mentioned before which have got nice oh, swivel all the way around, good forward, good back and a little bit of tilt in them as well. And then, as always is with the case with McFarlane Toys, you can curl the toes. So, as is regularly the case with McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse figures, the articulation is okay. It's decent, it's good enough. You can certainly, you know, get her into poses where she's deflecting bullets with the bracelets of submission, or if you've got a flight stand, you can get a half-decent kind of uh, f f f you know, flowing through the air kind of thing going on. Um, get her into punch-ups, or as you'll see with the accessory selection, get her into some more combat poses. It's all right. I've never been the biggest fan of find it a little bit limiting and this is definitely where I sort of edge more into the middle uh, with McFarlane toys so uh, again it's about the price if I'd paid 19 20 quid for this that I often do with McFarlane toys figures I'd be like yeah it's, it's all right it's brilliant and the, the tone of my voice would be a little bit more buoyant but because it's a 30 pound collector's edition figure I'm a bit like the articulation is limited so again it's that kind of value proposition type thing with the the collector's edition label that's been attached to the figure uh, just the same as with the aesthetic review so there we go uh, but make of it what you will let me know your uh, your thoughts and comments down below with regards to McFarlane articulation uh, in the meantime I'll move on to talk about the accessories and added value so I'm going to start with the hand swaps here. There are a total of six hands with the Wonder Woman Collector's Edition figure. I've had the closed fist hands on Wonder Woman through the duration of the review up to this point. But as you can see, we've got a grippy hand with a trigger finger. <laughs> <laughs> for whatever reason that is, uh, on uh, uh, left and right. And then we've also got an open palm hand available for left and right as well. It's a standard peg system, so you pop the hand off with the uh, peg there, and then you put the new one on, pushing it in until you get the nice little click. Then we have a weapon selection available with Wonder Woman. We've got the sword and axe of Athena. Well, I'm pretty sure the sword's the thought of Athena, but I can't remember. Is it the axe of Athena, or did she rob this off, like, Ares or something? I can't remember. Uh, the comic book lore is convoluted and labyrinthine in nature when it comes to uh, Wonder Woman origins stuff, but these are decent pieces of kit. The sword has got the uh, metallic... Uh, silver, although it looks a little plastically uh, around the blade and then the gold hilt and handle there and it's the same again with the battle axe you've got the uh, kind of more metallic although a bit plasticky looking uh, bladed section of the weapon and then the gold hilt and handle there this is a, a little kind of experience note i found the weapons quite hard to get into the grippy hands i had to heat them up to open up the thumbs and the grip there to make uh, enough room to hold on to the sword and axe and even then because of the smaller kind of mcfarlane hand sculpts that he uses the uh, they, they don't sit very well in the uh, uh, in the hand there it's a little bit of an un uncomfortable grip to my mind and in terms of visual experience then of course while we're talking of iconic wonder woman weaponry we have uh, a lasso of truth this is just a little bit of shiny cord basically that's been chucked in uh, to represent the lasso there it's fine it's sparkly it looks okay um it's uh, not um wired at all so it's all kind of loose and and uh, you know floppy uh, in nature uh, she does have this little hook here on the waist so that you can uh, kind of roll it up and hook it in if you're so inclined 
the length, the overall length of the lasso is quite long, and so you can only do so many rotations uh, to roll it up uh, to, before it gets too thick to fit in the hook at the top there. And then I'd, I feel like that looks just a bit untidy and uh, and not so great. I might sort of knot it up. I don't know. I'll, I'll see how I feel. But uh, for the vast majority of the time, I've not really been using it. I've I've popped that to one side. But uh, you know, what's Wonder Woman without a lasso of truth? It it needs to be there. Then on the more de defensive side, we've got Wonder Woman's shield here, uh, a sculpted piece of circular plastic with then um, a gold Wonder Woman W across the front there. It's all right. It's nicely sculpted. You can see some dents and scrapes in there. I'm going to if I hold it forward like that. There you go. You can see the dents and scrapes where it's seen some action. But this back panel here again, even though it's in a more metallic kind of colour, just looks a bit too plasticky to me. Uh, then on the other side of that, you can see that you've got these uh, these couple of straps here that you just kind of slide down the arm basically um, and have quite a loose hold on it. Oh, bit out of focus. Sorry, folks. Uh, yeah, you slide the arm down it and it's got a bit of a loose hold on it. Then you have the McFarlane Toys foot stand that comes, uh, you know, as, as standard with McFarlane Toys figures. Got the foot peg there. There's peg holes in the bottom of the feet. This one, because it's a collector's edition, has got the DC logo printed on it in like a silvery colour. Ooh. Uh, accounting and contributing somewhat towards that additional £10 price tag. Then we've also got the trading card as standard with the artwork, again, uh, the same as the back of the box. This one, again, has got a little bit of foil printing, embossed foil printing on it because it's a collector's edition, folks. Woo! And then on the other side, you've got a little bit of biographical detail on it. These are fine. I mean, I've said before when I've reviewed my Fallen uh, figures, I could take or leave, really, the the, the collector's card. They uh, get looked at a little bit, and then they go in a binder, never to be seen again. <laughs> Again. However, with this one, we also get this kind of weird trading card stand thing, which from the front has got the DC logo sculpted into it with the silver paint job, a little bit of, uh, I don't know, whatever you call this, like contoury detail at the base. The other side is just hollow, uh, and you can pop that down like so uh, and slide the trading card into the top to use as a bit of a display piece, which is fine if all you've done is exclusively pick up collector's edition figures where you've got these display stands for the trading cards just in general. Um, but if, like me, you've got just some standard mainline releases that don't have these trading card stands, then it looks a bit odd in display where you've got some figures displayed with the trading cards and some figures not. So... Um, Interesting idea, uh, but not sure about the implementation or the, the overall intention there. And then, of course, the absolute pièce de résistance, which I think really does account for and contribute towards the overall price tag of this collector's edition. Todd's included an intangible, invisible jet with every Wonder Woman. I mean, look at that. Amazing. So it's a solid accessory collection. It's decent. You can certainly see where some of that additional price tag has gone. I just question some of the implementation and how cheap some of it comes across. I don't know. Overall, it's, it's a good selection. I'm certainly always happy to have lots of additional hand swaps with my figures, but uh, it's, a, it's a bit tacky around the edges, you know, and therefore I'm going to give the accessory selection a little bit of a middly middly piece maybe even a down now if you're a good figure customizer and you can get a bit of a wash on the weapons or a paint job to improve the situation or you can find a way to integrate these types of things into your display that look interesting and exciting to give a bit of shelf lift then fine all for it and i'm open to uh, recommendations and suggestions in the comments down below but yeah i've just found it to be a bit cheap looking and a bit tacky again for a collector's edition figure i'm going to keep returning to this because this is the uh, this is the the big crux of it all uh it's a it's a McFarlane figure that you've paid 10 11 quid more for than you would do for a standard McFarlane figure and i'm not sure that added value is really you know justifying that additional cost and taking it over the top and improving the quality of the review you know so there we go all right there we go uh, let's take a look at wonder woman next to a couple of other figures now shall we 
Okay, folks, well, here is the Collector's Edition Wonder Woman with the mainline Nightfall Batman, the blue and grey edition. Um, good pairing there, I think, a decent mix. Here's Wonder Woman with an Action Comics 1000 Superman on a flight stand. The I, I meant to mention it with the Batman, but you can really see the skin tone situation difference here. Uh, the very plasticky, uh, like untanned, like super untanned milk bottle look of the Wonder Woman skin tone compared to the Superman there, which really stands out. Um, which is a shame. Here's Wonder Woman with the Nightfall Catwoman, the only other female figure in my McFarlane DC Multiverse collection. Uh, but you can sort of see the distinction, the difference in the sort of book size and style there for the uh, the more kind of uh, Amazonian warrior style book on Wonder Woman compared to the more athletic cat burglar style book that they've used for Catwoman. Uh, what you can definitely see is the nappy effect here, the McFarlane nappy effect on the Catwoman cat suits compared to on Wonder Woman on this side there. Here we are then, folks. Here's Wonder Woman making her way around on the battery-operated turntable so you can get a full 360 view while I offer up some final thoughts. And I'm not going to dwell on this. The bottom line is that you've probably detected from my tone through the course of the review that I've been a little bit disappointed with this. I've waited a long time for a good classic look Wonder Woman figure to add to the DC Multiverse McFarlane collection. And this is a collector's edition figure that I've forked out extra money for and I just don't think it's been implemented very well. This is Wonder Woman. You know what I mean? She's like the 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 the, the queen of the DC character staple and she's just very rough around the edges very loosey-goosey very cheap looking and um also plagued by some of the kind of limitations that are, are generally the case with McFarlane toys when it comes to things like articulation etc etc ability to do face sculpts so on so forth and yeah I just don't feel like I've had the value out of this figure that I was hoping for especially with the higher price tag that's come with a collector's edition figure so you know if you you can reconcile that and you really desperately want a wonder woman in the collection and that's fine but i'm just like nah, i don't know i've been underwhelmed i've been underwhelmed even knowing and having an expectation level around the the fallen toy stuff that you know is, is well established i know i know what i'm getting so there we are that's that's that really um I just, uh, for the price, if, if I'd have paid a standard price, this might have been a more positive review. You know, there you go. Uh, so thanks very much, folks, for coming and checking out my review of this uh, McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Wonder Woman. Uh, please do swing back round again sometime soon for more action figure and adult collector related content. But for now, I wish you a wonderful rest of the day, wonderful rest of the week, and I'll see you around these parts again sometime soon. All right, take it easy, folks.